Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Chauri and today we will look at signals in Linux. Signals are important because they are a part of the operating environment in which a process runs. All processes are affected by signals whether the underlying program has signal related code or not. So what is a signal? A signal is a notification. It is similar to the notifications we get on our smartphones. The difference is that a notification on a smartphone is for a human being whereas a signal is for a process. Another way to look at a signal is that signal is like an interrupt. It is a software interrupt generated by the kernel in response to some event that requires immediate attention. When an interrupt is received, the processing is suspended and the relevant interrupt handler is executed. Similarly, when a signal is received and a signal handler is installed for that signal, processing is stopped and the signal handler is executed. If there is no signal handler installed for the received signal, the default action for that signal is executed which is often to terminate the process. Each signal has a current disposition in a process. That is what happens when a signal is delivered to a process. Each signal has a default disposition which can be changed by the process. The default disposition of a signal is terminate the process or ignore the signal or terminate the process with code dump or stop the process or continue the process if it is currently stopped. There are two categories of signals standard signals and real-time signals. There are about 31 standard signals which have been there since the early days of Unix. The important ones or the signals that are encountered frequently are SIGHUB for hang-up, SIGINT for interrupt from keyboard, SIGQUIT quit from keyboard, SIGABRT which is called to the abort function, SIGBUS attempt to access invalid memory address, SIGFPE floating point error, sick kill for kill minus nine command, sick pipe which is broken pipe, sick alarm, alarm clock timer expired, sick term, termination signal for kill PID command and there are some more. Now there are two signals, sick kill and sick stop which are very important because they cannot be caught, blocked or ignored. For these two signals, the default action has to happen the default action for sick kill is to terminate the process and the default action for sick stop is to stop the process. POSIX real-time signals are as per POSIX.1b or IEEE standard 1003.1b 1993 also called POSIX.4 during development. The standard is for real-time extensions RTS for POSIX compliant operating systems. POSIX real-time signals provide additional signals, provide for queuing of signals and the ability to send a little data with a signal. We'll look at POSIX real-time signals a little later in this video. The signals in your Linux system are reliable. Why is that? Well, earlier the signals were not reliable. That was a time when a signal handler was installed using the signal system call. The problem was that Whenever a signal was delivered, its disposition was set to default. So after a signal handler returned, the process had to reinstall the signal handler. So there's a small time window between the time a signal is delivered and the signal handler is reinstalled. And if the signal came in that time window, the default action would be undertaken, which was often to terminate the process. So signals were considered to be unreliable. The anomaly was corrected with a SIG action system call for installing signal handlers. If a signal handler is installed with a SIG action system call, the signal disposition is not reset when a signal is received. And if you always use SIG action system call for installing signal handlers, we get reliable signals. Blocking signals. Signals can come anytime. However, there are times when we do not want our processes or thread to get interrupted. One obvious case is when a thread is setting signal handlers. A process can block signals. Signal mask. A signal mask is a set of currently blocked signals for a thread. Talking of threads, let me slightly digress and broach the topic of signals in multi-threading. How do signals work in threads vis-a-vis -vis processes? The short answer is that signal disposition is 
process wide but signal mask is for a thread it is not possible to send a signal to a particular thread of a process unless both the sender and the receiver are part of the same process if you send a signal to a multi threaded process which thread will receive the signal is not determinate if you want a dedicated thread for signals you can block signals using p thread sig mask in the main thread the threads created by the main inherit a copy of the signal mask in the thread dedicated to receiving signals you can wait for the relevant signals using sig wait for defining a signal mask we need a set of signals sig set and we did operations on sig set so we have signal set operation functions which operate on sig set to signal set operation functions you need to pass a pointer to type def sig set t sig empty set sets the signal set pointed by set to an empty set sig fill set adds all the signals to the set sig add set adds the signal identified by the second parameter signum to the set similarly sig del set removes the signal signum from the set sig is member checks whether the signal signum is in the set p thread sig mask is the call for changing the signal mask for a thread the first parameter is how which can be sig block that means the new signal mask should include the signals in the set how could be sig unblock which means that the new signal mask should exclude the signals in the set the third value of how is sig set mask which means that signals the set should become the new signal mask replacing the earlier one the value of the earlier signal mask is returned in the sig set pointed by old set p thread sig mask implies that you are using the p threads library and you need to link with the minus lp thread sig proc mask is the older system call for changing the signal mask of single threaded processes the parameters are same as that of p thread sig mask sig proc mask should only be used for single threaded processes if you use it for multi thread processes the results are unspecified the sig action system call is for changing the action taken on receipt of a signal the first parameter is signum which can be any signal except sig kill and sig stop the second parameter act is a pointer to a structure sig action for the new action for signal sig number If you look at the struct sig action the first two members are sa handler and sa sig action sa handler and sa sig action are mutually exclusive and only one of them is to be used if sa sig info is specified in sa flags sa sig action is used otherwise sa handler is used as a programmer if you want to specify signal handler for real time signals use sa sig action otherwise use as a handler now consider the case when we are using as a handler if as a handler is sig dfl it means that the default action of the signal is to be restored if as a handler is sig ign then the signal is to be ignored as a handler may be a pointer to a signal handler function the function prototype is like void signal handler function int signum in this case signal handler fn is installed as a signal handler for that signal the member sm mask is a set of signals that need to be blocked so the signals specified in the sm mask are added to the signal mask of the thread the signal signum is also blocked and is added to the signal mask of the thread however if sa no differ is specified in sa flags the signal for which the handler is being installed is not blocked after the execution of the signal handler the thread's original mask is restored coming back to the sa flags we have already seen that if sa sig info is specified then sa sig action is used otherwise sa handler is used also if sa no differ is specified the signal for which the signal handler is invoked is not blocked during the execution of the handler flag sa no cld stop is for sig chld signal which means that sig chld should not be delivered when a child stops or starts similarly sa no cld wait 
is also for sick CHLD and it means that children should not be transformed into zombies when they terminate. Then there is flag as a restart which means that if a thread is blocked in a system call like read and a signal comes, it should be restarted when the execution of signal handler is over. The member as a restorer is not to be used by application programs. Now consider the case when SA SIG info is specified in SA flags. This means that SA SIG action is a pointer to the signal handler function that needs to be installed for the signal signum. The prototype of the signal handler function in that case is void signal handler fn int signum sig info t pointer sig info void pointer context. The first parameter is the signal number for which the signal handler function is invoked. The last parameter context is not to be used by the signal handler function. The second parameter is a pointer to a structure type def sig info t which is like this. SI signal, SI error number and SI code are defined for all signals. SI signal is obviously the signal number. SI error no is generally unused in Linux. SI code gives the reason for the signal. If SI code is SI user, the signal is sent because of a killed system call. If SI code is SI kernel, the signal is sent by the kernel. If SI code is SI queue, the signal is sent because of a sick queue function call. If SI code is SI timer, the signal is sent because a POS 6 timer has expired. If SI code is SI async IO, the signal is sent because Asynchronous I.O. has been completed. If SI code is SI MESGQ, the signal has been sent because a message has come on an empty message queue and there was a MQ notify registration. Another important part of SIG info t structure is a signal value, SI value, which can either be an integer value, SI int, or a pointer, SI PTR. The value can be an application defined code which tells more about the signal. Signals may get generated naturally like when a process tries to access non-existent memory or when there is a divide by zero and signals can be generated synthetically that is by using certain system calls like kill we can send a signal to a process. In this part, we look at some system calls that generate signals synthetically. The kill system call is for sending the signal sig to a process group or an individual process. If PID is a positive integer, the signal is sent to the process specified by the PID. If PID is zero, the signal is sent to all processes in the process group of the calling process. If PID is minus one, the signal is sent to all processes. The calling process has permission to send signal, except the init process. If PID is less than minus one, the signal is sent to every process whose process group ID is minus PID. Kill PG sends a signal to all processes in the process group identified by the first parameter PGRP. If PGRP is zero, the signal is sent to all processes in the process group of the calling process. Pthread kill sends a signal to the thread identified by the first parameter. The receiving thread must be a part of the calling thread's process. Now, if the signal is intended to terminate the receiving thread, the entire process gets terminated along with the thread. So, the right way to terminate a thread is to use pthread cancel. Raise is a function to send a signal to the calling thread. That is, a thread sends a signal to itself. The about function generates sig abrt signal for the calling process and causes its own abnormal termination. The about call never returns. Sigwet has two parameters, a pointer to a signal set and a return parameter pointed to a signal. A thread wants to block waiting for a signal in the set. Before calling sigwet, the thread blocks the signals specified in the set. When one of the signals specified in the set comes, the wait is over. The thread accepts the signal and the accepted signal is returned via the second parameter, the pointer to the signal. 
writing a signal handler has some unique requirements. You cannot use functions like printf, exit, etc. There is a list of safe functions for use in signal handlers and the list can be printed with a command main signal hyphen safety. Moreover, global variables can only be used safely if they are of the type volatile sig atomic t. Since all programs can receive signals, it is good to have some basic signal processing in our programs. In this example, we ignored sig hub and we set signal handler for sig int, sig quit, sig term. Next, we set a signal handler for sig chld. The flag sa restart ensures that if the signal is received during a blocked system call, that system call is restarted. Flag sa no cld stop ensures that no signals are received for child processes stop or resume. Flag sa no cld wait ensures that children do not turn into zombies when they terminate. And we unblock all the signals by setting the signal mask to the empty set and and these are the two signal handlers. Till now, we have been concentrating on standard signals. There are also POSIX real-time signals as specified in POSIX.1b standard. POSIX real-time signals are beyond the standard signals and are in the range defined by macros SIGRT min and SIGRT max. The default action for a POSIX real-time signal is to terminate the receiving process. So, if you want to use a real-time signal, you need to change the signal action using the SIG action call. An important characteristic of real-time signals is that these signals are queued to the receiving process. Even if the same real-time signal is received many times, the multiple instances are queued to the process in the chronological order. Another important characteristic is that some data can be passed along with a signal. This is in the form of an integer or a pointer. The integer can be a code which gives information associated with the signal. The sig function sends signal sig to a process identified by PID. Along with the signal, a value is sent which is a union of an int and a pointer. The receiving process can get this value in the signal handler for signal sig. The signal handler has a parameter a pointer to type def sig info t structure and from this structure the receiving process can get the value passed. Important to note that multiple calls to sig queue queue the signal to the process. The sig wait info system call is an improvement on the sig wait call. It blocks till a signal in the set pointed by the first parameter becomes pending. Before making the sig wait info call, the signals in the set are blocked by the process. Unlike SIGWAIT, SIGWAIT info has a parameter appointed to SIGINFO T structure which has more details about the signal. Once a signal in the set becomes pending, SIGWAIT info accepts the signal and returns the signal ID. SIG time to wait is SIGWAIT info plus a timeout. If no signal is pending and timeout occurs, SIG time to wait returns minus 1 and ERR NO is set to E again. As an example, consider a situation in a cricket match where a manager, too busy in making arrangements, nevertheless wants to be informed about happenings. And there is a scorer whose job is to keep scores and agrees to signal to the manager about events such as batsman hitting a 4 or a 6 and a wicket falling. The scorer and the manager can use Linux signals for their short, efficient and effective communication. This is the manager program. The manager and the scorer use SIGRT min for their communication. So manager starts by changing the signal action for SIGRT min. He sets the signal handler as SIGRT min handler which uses the SI value in SIG info t structure to know more about what happened. The struct SIG info t has SI value union which in turn has SI val int an integer which is the code for what happened. If the integer is character 4, it means 4 runs have been scored. If it is character 6, it means that 6 runs have been scored. And if it is w, it means a wicket has fallen. This is a scorer program. The scorer needs to know the manager process ID so that it can send signals to it. So the scorer is invoked with the manager's PID as a command line argument. The scorer enters the option for the highlight happening 
and sends the SIG RTMN signal to the manager using SIG queue. We can compile and run the manager and scorer programs. And we come to the end of this video. You can find all this information at https colon double slash tinyurl.com slash signals hyphen in hyphen linux and https colon double slash tinyurl.com slash rt hyphen signals. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and stay safe.